Ah, yes. Against Grumpkins and Snarks and all the other monsters your wet nurse warned you about. You're a smart reader. You don't believe that nonsense. Grumpkins and Snarks, real or myth? Scary story to keep children in line, or another frightening creature forgotten with the march of time? We have little information on Grumpkins and even less on Snarks. Both are said to live beyond the wall, with Snarks sometimes having beards and Grumpkins being very short or small. In the Seven Kingdoms, their mention is often used in a way that suggests they are mythical creatures similar to ghouls and ghosts. Really, besides the short stature and occasional beard, we aren't given much in the way of what they even look like. But let's talk about what we do know, or can speculate about both Grumpkins and Snarks. First, let's talk about Grumpkins. Children appear to fear them. Is this because of their appearance? We can begin to theorize from characters' dialogue or inner thoughts, such as when Tyrion asks why Jon's dire wolf attacked him. Jon responds, maybe he thought you were a Grumpkin, and Tyrion agrees that he does rather look like one. Could this simply be a self-deprecating remark on Tyrion's part, or some hint of their looks? Tyrion is described as being rather ugly, and that is the comparison Jon and him could be drawing between the imp and the creatures. Unfortunately, beyond that, we have little other physical descriptors of Grumpkins. What do Grumpkins actually do, especially to instill such fear? Through Old Nan's stories and the Stark children, we have some clues as to what the Grumpkins are capable of. Old Nan, who has a scary accuracy in her stories, tells the Stark children that Grumpkins craft magic things that could make a wish come true. Arya remembers Old Nan's stories and expands on Grumpkins, thinking how men who were given magic wishes by a Grumpkin had to be especially careful of the third wish, because it was the last. When Jon is distressed about his brother Rob fighting, Lord Mormont asks him why they need him and if he is such a mighty warrior, or do you carry a Grumpkin in your pocket to magic up your sword? So it is clear they are believed to have magic or possess the ability or knowledge to create or use magical items. Is the ability to use magic and grant wishes really that scary though? Why do children fear them? Because they look frightening and wield magic? Maybe. Could their magic be like a monkey's paw in our world? Sure, you get three wishes, but often in those stories you regret every single one, and the wishes come with an enormous price. However, there could be more to them than scary magic, and we have another line about Grumpkins that gives them this more sinister note. Sansa, as a little girl, asks if Grumpkins had taken her real sister as a baby and switched her with Arya. This could imply Grumpkins snatch children from their homes. Even if they don't, children could fear Grumpkins because their tail is used by those in the Seven Kingdoms as a way of making their children behave. If you don't listen, the Grumpkins will find you and they will take you. Next, what about Snarks? What do they do? Besides their beards and maybe living beyond the wall, we don't have much else. Most likely, Snarks are simply a nod to Lewis Carroll's The Hunting of the Snark which was used as an imaginary animal that is hard to track down and nothing more. However, being called a snark may also be used as an insult in Westeros. When Lord Marmont refers to his sister Meg, he says she's a hoary old snark, stubborn, short-tempered, and willful. Beyond that, snarks aren't given any more detail. So Grumpkins use magic and may snatch children away, and snarks may have beards, and to look like one is an insult. But are Grumpkins and snarks real? Most of those south of the Wall and Westeros scoff at the idea of Grumpkins and Snarks. We are given the impression that these creatures are seen as imaginary enemies or monsters, and or a way to discredit people. There are many examples of this. When Sansa thinks of Grumpkins, she reminds herself that she's too old to believe in them, and implies that they are silly, non-existent monsters that children believe in. Rob, when Bran asks if a silly story Old Nan tells is true, he laughs and asks Bran if he believes in Grumpkins too. This further pushes the thought that Grumpkins and Snarks are imaginary and only believed by children. When Jon Snow is thinking of the queer folks beyond the wall, he thinks that though he may not have seen any Snarks or Grumpkins yet, that the wildlings could eat them for supper for all he knows. John has seen many new and bewildering things north of the wall. That him thinking he might see Grumpkins and Snarks, creatures thought to not exist, next, isn't surprising. After all, he's seen so many mad and strange things. Why not Grumpkins and Snarks, who to the people below the wall are as strange and unfathomable as giants and the children of the forest? Later, upon returning to the Night's Watch, Jon Snow tells Sir Alistair that Mance may have found the Horn of Winter. Sir Alistair chuckles and asks if Jon had been commanded to count their snarks as well. 
another reference to them being imaginary or made up. We also see a similar thought process with Catelyn. While she's doubting herself, she begins to scorn herself. She claims, you are seeing grumpkins in the woodpile. You are becoming an old, silly woman, sick with grief and fear. Here they are used as an imaginary enemy that people fear without cause. Varys uses snarks and grumpkins in a way that makes them seem like imaginary enemies as well. He tells Tyrion that he has successfully accomplished many tasks while making it all seem mockery, so none may say that the dwarf fears snarks and grumpkins. This would be similar to our own idiom, afraid of one's own shadow. Tyrion took care of many problems without making it seem like he's afraid of his own shadow or imaginary enemies, and for that he is praised. This line of thought is continued with Sir Marlin Manderley, who, in disdain, uses the mention of snarks as an enemy White Harbor will never see. It has been centuries since White Harbor has seen any wildlings, and the Iron Men have never troubled this coast. Does Lord Stannis propose to defend us against snarks and dragons, too? Laughter sweeps through the court at this, suggesting that snarks will never be a danger or even seen. Similar to this, when dragons are brought up to Tyrion and Cersei Lannister, they scoff and equate seeing them to seeing grumpkins and snarks. When dragons in Essos is brought up, Tyrion says the world is full of such mad tales. Grumpkins and snarks, ghosts and ghouls, mermaids, rock goblins, winged horses, winged pigs, winged lions. When dragons are brought up to Cersei and the people are talking about them, she counters, and manticores no doubt, and bearded snarks. She chuckles thinking the idea of dragons are as silly as those other creatures. But in the books, not only have they been used as imaginary creatures, but also as a way to discount things, such as the Night's Watch. Kyburn claims, The Night's Watch defends us all from snarks and grumpkins. My lords, I say we much help the brave Black Brothers. This is clearly an insult to the Night's Watch and their supposed importance. Why does it matter if we send them thieves and poachers? It's not like they really do anything up there. Tyrion Lannister also discounts the Night's Watch in a similar way. One of the biggest skeptics we see, Tyrion largely dismisses Grumpkins and Snarks as bedtime stories to scare children. When Jon Snow talks about the honor of the Night's Watch, Tyrion tells him it is a heap for all the misfits of the realm ending up at the wall to watch for Grumpkins and Snarks and all the other monsters your wet nurse warned you about. The good part is there's no Grumpkins or Snarks, so it's scarcely dangerous work. When talking about what is beyond the wall, woods and mountains and frozen lakes with lots of snow and ice, Tyrion again dismisses the usefulness of the watch and adds, and the Grumpkins, and the Snarks. Let us not forget them, Lord Snow, or else what's this big thing for? We see another Tyrion dismissal when Benjen was looking for Jon. Benjen gets upset, telling Jon to not go off by himself, and that he thought the others had gotten him. Tyrion jabs, it was the Grumpkins. As well, he talks down the watch when remarking about how many rangers have vanished of late. He smiles and says, Perhaps the Grumpkins are hungry this year. So, we see a general dismissal of Snarks and Grumpkins being real by the people of the Seven Kingdoms, and as a way to insult others or dismiss them. Wow, you really believe that? What's next? You think Grumpkins exist? However, how well can we trust their skepticism? Tyrion and many others dismiss dragons and the others, yet we know both exist. Even Tyrion begins to doubt his skepticism at the wall, thinking he could almost believe the talk of the others, the enemy in the night. His jokes of Grumpkins and Snarks no longer seemed quite so funny. Just because we haven't seen them in the books doesn't mean they don't exist or won't serve a further purpose. What are your thoughts? Grumpkins and Snarks, real or myth? Something you tell your kids to make them behave, or sinister, elusive creatures. List your theories below. All of October will be Halloween-themed Game of Thrones A Song of Ice and Fire videos, such as scariest characters, darkest theories, top killers, etc. Release days are Sunday, Wednesday, and one or two other random days throughout the week. In November, we continue with the North and go back to our normal Sunday and Wednesday schedule. If you haven't watched my Darkest Passages Part 2, make sure you do that. There's a giveaway going on. If you list something I didn't include in my top 20, there's a chance to win a copy of A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Also, you may notice that I already put up one old Nan tale. I might do one or two more of those, so don't be confused if you see them, such as the rat cook. It's just me reciting the old Nan tale and maybe adding a detail or two from other characters.